Hello everybody, Anna Sabramowitz here. Hope you're having a fabulous day. Let's talk about scenarios. Let's talk about creativity. Now, uh, yesterday I had, um, basically what I did is I, uh, I got an email from somebody and I thought this is a great topic and a great question and it's kind of my theme this week. So I thought, hey, I'll answer it. Well, what happened is as a result is some people sent me more messages about questions that they, they'd like me to discuss uh, in these uh, live sessions. So today's session comes from somebody called Ian, who's not really Ian, but I'm protecting the innocent. And uh, the question was, um, and, and Ian's already putting together uh, interactive stories, so he's uh, he likes what he does, he loves what he does, but he said that his stumbling block is coming up with creative ideas for scenarios. He says that's where he always gets stuck. And I think this is an excellent question, and I'm so glad he asked it because uh, this is one of the things that I discuss in my uh, elearningsecrets.com webinar because they're, um, you know, coming up with great scenarios that are contextual, mean things to, to people that, are, that resonate with them, especially in an interactive story. They need to be, they need to be good, right? So people don't shut off or don't think that you're making stuff up. They really need to resonate with those, uh, those scenarios. So I have some great tips for you today on how to uh, craft really meaningful scenarios, how to make sure that they're relevant to your audience. So if that sounds awesome, then stick around. I'll get right into it and give you some awesome tips and tricks, as I always do. Hopefully, you know, my aim is always to over deliver. But the other thing I wanted to say is that um, I really appreciate you being here. Uh, you could be looking at a million other things, a ton of other lives someplace else, and uh, I appreciate you being here. So, so if you're visiting from some place that's other than my house, you better say hello in the chat. I love seeing where you guys are from. So first off, let's just, I got a little bit of notes today because I have some specific questions for you guys uh, to add to your repertoire when you're crafting your own interactive story, right? So first off, let's just talk about interactive stories just really quickly. Um, uh, what, what's an interactive story, right? An interactive story is not there to teach you anything. An interactive story is to help you recognize gaps, help you see the potential of a future, right? And help you, um, help you see the world um, through maybe a little bit of a different lens, right? That's our interactive story. Now, so let's just talk about the interactive story framework a little bit. And I want to talk about this because this will help you with the crafting of those scenarios. This will help you get the information that you need. And I have to tell you, it is not difficult. You just have to ask the right questions of the right people. That's all it comes down to. Okay. So an interactive story, it has a beginning and a middle and an end, right? The beginning and the end are the pieces that we set up that are about the character, the character who's in a mundane, regular world, and then through the challenges that they go through, they transform and achieve the end, whatever that is, right? And I talk about more about story structure in other videos, so I'm not gonna get into that here, okay? But basically what happens is your scenarios are the pieces that go in the middle right? The decisions that somebody has to go through. What are scenarios? Scenarios are basically decisions. What are the decisions that somebody has to make and how to make them well in order to actually get over here? Oh, we got Tina here from home office in North Carolina. Awesome. Home office to home office. <laughs> That's great. And Carol from Minneapolis. That's sweet. Welcome. All right. So, now, the other thing you have to uh, realize when you're crafting these stories is the story part comes from you, to be honest. Uh, what happens is you're doing a bit of like research and thinking and uh, talking to people who are in that context. And what you do as a result is you come up with a character that helps um, that helps that person contextualize the, the story, right? It's not a story about dragons, leprechauns. Um, hello, Corinne. It's not a story about, um, you know, it, there's no, there's the theme here has nothing to do with the way this looks. The theme here is what do I want this person to get out of the story at the very end, right? And one of the things that I found is one of the awesomest hacks ever, right, is not to try and come up with these with the, the scenarios with the subject matter expert. And there's a reason for this. Subject matter experts are experts. And what happens to experts? Experts, uh, and this is an, this happens to all of us as we gain comfort with uh, something that we're learning. Um, an expert 
is great at, and I always leverage subject matter experts because they're great at giving you the big picture and they're great at giving you, um, especially after you've got your draft done, a subject matter expert is an excellent resource for you to actually get into um, the validation of whether those uh, decisions and consequences and all those other things are valid and accurate, whether they represent uh, accurate you know, uh, situations. But they are not good at coming up with scenarios. And the reason is because a scenario is very uh, much, it's a strategic tool to help somebody who is in a situation, uh, put them in a situation that they're not familiar with and then give them opportunities to test their biases or test their beliefs or test their uh, misconceptions, right? And the thing with a subject matter expert is uh, they probably already know the right answer. So they don't know the feelings that got in the way of making a decision. Uh, they don't know the biases that somebody might have in getting in, you know, making that decision or the misconceptions. Because as an expert, what you do is um, you create um, basically a, a body of knowledge. You, you create it in a way that only helps you remember the right answer, right? Why would you remember the struggle or the wrong answers. You're only focused on the correct answer and the correct protocol because that helps you execute and makes you the expert, right? So that's why you have to talk to gather really solid scenarios and that are uh, meaningful to the end user. Guess who you have to talk to? You have to talk to practitioners in the field. So I talk to the person who, and you have to choose these people very carefully. They're not gonna be people who, uh, let me move this this way, yeah. They're not gonna be people who um, who are experts in that field have already been working in there. That's basically to me a subject matter expert. Who I'm looking for, and this is very strategic, is somebody who remembers what it was like to be cold and unaware in the challenges that they went through, right? And that they were in that position in the past six months to a year. And I'm not looking for just anybody. I'm looking for somebody who's kicked butt, right? I'm not looking for somebody who's mediocre here. I'm looking for somebody who had this journey of transformation, didn't just plod on, they actually just, they actually kicked butt, took names, and they're they're awesome. They're like a top achiever within six months or a year. They're the person who is winning, right? And then when I've got that person, uh, all I have to do is I have a special script that I um, I walk them through and the script is meant to discover all these challenges. And I'm gonna give you uh, four of the questions that I have for my script so that you guys can get started, okay? Um, now, by the way, if you want like the full, how does this actually work? How do you choose these people? And a case study specifically on uh, how I uh, got an organization to go along with me and actually leverage this, uh, this strategy, go to elearningsecrets.com and there I have a two hour basically master class on how to get started with interactive stories. And then, you know, how do you get that gold? How do you get all this stuff, right? And I'm sure Ian's gonna appreciate this because if you think it's gonna come out of you, you're gonna get frustrated because you don't know the context. And if you're making this stuff up, I don't care how good it sounds, it's not gonna be genuine to the person who's going through it. So that's gonna help. Hello, Latrec, <laughs> wonderful to have you here. Okay, so here are the questions you're gonna ask somebody because remember what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out your practitioner, the person who is awesome at what they're doing right now and they've gotten there in about six months and a year. They still remember what it was like to be unaware, what biases they had and all those things. You're gonna be asking them these questions. What made you wanna get good at this, right? And the reason you wanna ask this question is because this person over here has a, they're in a mundane, regular world. But the other thing that is happening over here is they're, they're happy, like everything's okay, right? So what happens is we call it the inciting incident, but sometimes something happens that is finally the straw that breaks the camel's back, right? Where they're like, I gotta change, something's gotta give. This isn't, you know, they're maybe they're coming home every day and they're just exhausted and they feel I've made no progress. Maybe they're coming home every day and they're pissed off because their neighbor's getting a brand new car every six months and they're not. And they're like, what am I doing wrong, right? So those are the things that you want to um, figure out because whatever it was for this person, you might want to use it in your story. That's not necessarily you're going to use it in your story. You're, you're talking about three to five people, right? 
and you're going to use them as inspiration for your story to craft the most terrible mundane world over here. So this is the best thing ever, right? Getting to this end. Now, another question you're going to ask is, what does success look like? So if you're out of the context, right, and you're trying to craft a real story, you're not going to go for things that everybody thinks that the business cares about, which is like, you're going to be the top salesperson. You're going to get the biggest bonus. That's one thing. But for a lot of people, money is a means to something. So you got to figure out the deeper reason for your characters. Sometimes it's, you know, coming home and um, having your spouse be proud of you because um, you you walk in confident and that person knows that you're do you know you're satisfied in your job and you're kicking butt and and you love that and that that makes them that inspires them as well or um, you know having uh, coming to a meeting and regardless of whether you are um, your idea gets uh, gets implemented you know that you did the best job ever. Um, and you and you were confident in sharing your ideas be, where before you were not confident. Like those are things that really matter to people. So you got to dig, you got to figure out what does success look like. So, so then what happens is when you're crafting your story, and like I said, visit other videos for how to craft stories, uh, which is what I do, <laughs> right? Almost every single uh, single week, I tell you how how to make your story better. One of the things you're going to be doing is really figuring out um, how to make it one a difference between these two these two states, right? Before and after, it has to be explicit almost. And then there's going to be more than one story. There's going to be the story of why the hero decided to get on the journey, and then also what the hero learns about himself as they go on this journey, right? So that's going to be super cool. And then the other thing is, you know, what got in the way? So they're going to tell you. What got in the way? What are some things that really you struggled with? And they're gonna say, you know what? If it's a salesperson, I was totally cool with the process, but when it came to the objections, I was like, ah, I got stuck, right? And then you dig into that. Okay, so the objections really got in the way for you. What what was it about the objections? What were, were things that really uh, messed you up? And also, uh, what were some things maybe that, that you believed in the beginning that came to be completely untrue at the end. What were some things, right? So what you're trying to do is get them to tell you all of these scenarios. And the, the, the beautiful thing is you don't have to make any of this up. You're getting it from the people who are living in that reality, which is perfect, who are living in that context. They're giving you the language that you need to express this in the right way. And they're telling you the real stuff. You're not getting this from a SME. And sometimes SMEs can oversimplify things and sometimes they don't have they don't have the capacity to tap into what it was like to be unaware and cold in the beginning. If somebody's been doing this for a decade, I don't care if they were the top salesperson, if they're no longer selling, they don't remember what it was like unless they actively continue to pull it back. But I would still talk to the person who is there, who's living in that reality and has recently made this obstacle their own, right? This challenge, it, they just recently lived it. That's who you want to tap into. And then you use your subject matter expert to verify if everything is in the right sequence, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all kosher. So that's what you really want. All right. Damien, also in his home office. <laughs> awesome. And um, Cathal, walking the dog in Telford. Okay, that's t totally cool. <laughs> Walks are my favorite time to percolate and think about uh, stories and ideas or have, uh, you know, work things out. That's what happens to me. Uh, I really enjoy those. So if, if you're ever stuck at home, uh, it sucks, right? So walking, it, it helps with your creativity and lets your subconscious mind focus on on the good things. We talk about that in our community. Um, so we have a community of interactive storytellers and the thing is, you know, I can give people uh, frameworks and systems and things like that, but what happens is in the end, to craft a good story or to solve, um, to reflect on the feedback that you get and then go back to it and say, hmm, I wonder how I could make this more impactful. I wonder how I can make this more emotionally engaging because we're all about the emotions, right? And so what happens is you end up going for walks and a lot, of, a lot of us say that now, it's like I had to go for like a two hour walk and then the problem was solved and I came back and I had a fresh idea. And so it's kind of cool because you realize creativity is not something you produce in front of the computer. Creativity is something where you struggle enough with a problem and then you go away and let something else rather than the, the babble in the front of the brain work on it uh, so that you can actually be truly creative. So 
what I want you to stress to Ian then is that the scenarios are nothing that you need to really come up with. The scenarios are something you draw on from your practitioners and and then you use their the conversations that you have with them and the questions that I just shared with you to inspire you to put together a based on a true story compilation story, right? Which also makes this more credible because it's based on real people and that is the best. Um, all right, so I hope you found this helpful. If you wanna learn more about interactive storytelling, I've mentioned elearningsecrets.com. Go there, register. Uh, you might be getting some emails from me in the future about uh, upcoming events and things like that. And also just, you know, some success stories from our students. Uh, but also at the end of this month, um, I'm going to be opening up enrollment again to get into our coaching program. Now, um, the coaching program is for people who, there's two kinds of, majorly two kinds of people in our program. One is for people who um, are already working, right? And what they're doing is uh, they they might be in a place where they don't necessarily get to be as um, creative as they want. They've seen some potential, they've seen some demos, they've seen some experiences, and they said, mm, I wanna be more creative. So they're crafting a piece for themselves, right? And some of them are doing it based on their own experience or they're trying to solve a problem in the world because if you're gonna put out a piece that is out there, uh, why not create something that actually helps people live better lives, right? So if you can solve a problem, that's what all the students are really focusing on, solving a problem. That also is a sweet hack because if you create something that solves a problem like bullying, like, um, like productivity, uh, like dealing with, you know, uh, with family who don't agree with your religious background, whatever, right? and those are examples all from our community, then what happens is it becomes shareable because it solves a problem, somebody else will wanna share it. And that's the best, right? So um, so anyways, so that's one part of the, the community. The other part of the community are people who are already working in organizations that understand that storytelling is super powerful and can actually draw people in, engage them emotionally, maybe change their behavior to ignite them into that path of learning. Because a lot of people, like I said, they're in their mundane everyday world, but they're totally fine being there because the world is making sense to them right now. So the interactive story is meant to maybe jar them a little bit out of that. And what I think is really cool is that a lot of the organizations that, um, that are in our community, um, they've been leveraging storytelling to outside, outside audiences, right? Their customers but they haven't thought about how to use storytelling on the inside for their own employees and how that can be a really engaging experience, right? So that's pretty cool. I, I love it that we're kind of rediscovering this passion again, and they are, which is wonderful. So if um, you wanna craft a story or if you're a part of a workplace where you're like, I want to you know, leverage this and incorporate this into my repertoire, because it's not a silver bullet, it works with in conjunction with other strategies, right? but it's one more strategy that you can use to actually truly engage people, why not, right? So I'd love to talk to you. I'll put a link to uh, book a strategy session with me underneath the video if you want um, to really discover if this is for you and if it's going to take you where you wanna go, I'd love to talk to you. All right, so you guys have a wonderful rest of the day and I'll see you here again tomorrow. Hopefully uh, you guys will send me some more questions and that makes it easy for me because then I just get to go on and answer your questions, <laughs> all right? Take care everybody, bye.